Hello everyone, my name is Aaron and this is the Game Day Hour. Last episode we did the AFC record and playoff predictions. Today we do the NFC record and playoff predictions. So of course we're going to handle it the same way. We're going to go through the nine teams that didn't make it and then the seven teams that will make it based on how the playoffs are set. And it's going to be fun. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you do, please leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe. Let's get started. So again, we're going to work our way up from the worst to the best based on record. So we're going to start with the teams that did not make the playoffs. I believe the Cardinals will tie the Colts and the Texans with the worst record and potentially get the first overall pick. They have a new head coach and I don't see that team being very successful this year. I just still think that there's a little bit of some problems within the locker room. They lost DeAndre Hopkins and this, this team just feels a little incomplete. The Green Bay Packers have a new start with Jordan Love and I do believe Jordan Love will get better. But like all beginning seasons or most beginning seasons, I do think he's going to have his struggles. So I think the Packers will go 3-14, and 14, tied with the Cardinals, but I think the Cardinals will just be slightly worse. The Washington Commanders will begin a new reign with new management, but I still think with a new quarterback, they are going to go 4-13. and 13, But they are trending in the right direction as a franchise overall, so a lot of excitement going on in Washington. The Atlanta Falcons will continue the struggle, and that's mostly because I think their defense is still unproven with a young quarterback at the helm. The Panthers will tie Atlanta, but I do believe they made the right choice in getting Bryce Young, and over some time he's going to get better. I believe that this year he's going to play great, I just also think that his team overall will need some uh, improvement because most of the team is made up of free agency, so there isn't a chemistry connection just yet, but it's going to get there. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, of course, are starting their new reign without Tom Brady, and now they have Baker Mayfield. I think because of the problems I've been hearing so far in training camp that there might be some quarterback changes or potentially uh, multiple quarterbacks throughout the year, and because of that, I think the Buccaneers will be 6-11. and Though the Giants had a pretty good year last year making the playoffs, I think they're going to go down this year because I think their schedule is going to be a little tougher. But that does not necessarily mean that New York is going to play bad. It's just I think 7-10 and 10 is where I would see them going game by game. I do believe that they will not beat the Eagles or the Cowboys, but will split with Washington. So that's where part of their record comes into play. The Minnesota Vikings have always been a team with great talent, but I never see them produce enough to make the playoffs. And even though they made the playoffs last year, they clearly weren't at their best when they were playing. So I believe that the Minnesota Vikings will drop to 7-10 and 10 this year. The Los Angeles Rams are just so close, but I do believe there is a struggle between having to play San Francisco and Seattle multiple times, and the uh, schedule they have this year is pretty difficult in and out of itself. 8-9 and nine is where I see the former Super Bowl champions. Now this is where things start to get spicy. We have the NFC playoff standings, and I know there's going to be a lot of disagreement within this, so I'm going to be very logical about each choice. Let's get started. So Seattle had success last year under Geno Smith, sneaking into the playoffs with the help of the Detroit Lions against the Packers, and even though their playoff game against San Francisco wasn't that great, it still show a lot of promise. They have a loaded roster. Their offense got really good and I mean even in the draft you got Jackson Smith Jigba you also got Weatherspoon you got a loaded roster waiting to go all out this year and it's young I still think that they're not the best team in that division so 9-8 and eight is where I have the Seahawks the Detroit Lions a lot of people are saying the Lions might jump Minnesota as the leading team in the NFC North but I still think that the Lions have some learning curves to go around and I don't think they win the division but they're extremely close I think that the Lions this year will be a very good team to watch out for but they are still going to have those minor struggles that better teams are going to take advantage of here we go. The Philadelphia Eagles at 12 and 5. I know what somebody is trying to say. Oh, this might be a homer pick, but I actually have a logical reason why I say the Eagles don't jump the Cowboys this year in record. It does not mean they are a lesser team than Dallas. As a matter of fact, I see both teams pretty equally with Philly just being slightly better. 
it comes down to strength of schedule. There's a little duration throughout the year, four games where they go to Kansas City, they host Buffalo, they host San Francisco, and then they go to Dallas. That's where I think they're going to have the biggest struggles, plus a few minor hits throughout the year. But 12-5, and five, just because their record goes down from last year does not mean their team is bad. It just means that their schedule is tougher than Dallas this year, which is why I have them at 12-5 and five and less than the Dallas Cowboys. Now it's time to take a look at the teams that won the division. And here's a shocker. The Chicago Bears at 11-6. and six. There's always been a slight trend with getting a wide receiver for your young star quarterback. The Bills ended up winning when they got Stephon Diggs. The Dolphins got to the playoffs with Tyree Kill. The Eagles with A.J. Brown. And now DJ Moore is making his appearance in Chicago to help Justin Fields. This is bound to get very good. And I think Fields takes a major step this year into pushing the Bears into the playoffs. So them at 11 and 6, they host the bottom seed of the playoffs, but they get to host the Philadelphia Eagles first round. So I think there's not much question here. Tampa Bay is going to struggle without Tom Brady and Desmond Ritter and Bryce Young leading their teams. They're very young. The experienced quarterback is Derek Carr. And with the Saints roster, I believe he is going to take the Saints to 11 and 6 and they're going to make the playoffs hosting the Detroit Lions. New Orleans looks good on paper and I think they're going to show why they are a very good team and why they should be projected as very high for the playoffs. The Dallas Cowboys at 13 and 4. Now, I've been predicting records for the last three years, and the last two years, I got the Cowboys record right twice in a row at 12 and 5. So, this is what I see from the Cowboys this year. They're going to lose at San Francisco and split with Philly. I think we all understand that that's probably going to be the reality. You also have a split with Washington at the end, because I always think that Washington is a Trojan horse in the NFC East. And then their last loss is going to come to Buffalo at Buffalo. I mean, that's a difficult one. I don't think that we're going to come out of that alive. And I say we. Yes, I'm a Cowboys fan. It does not mean that they are better than Philly, of course. It just means that they have an easier schedule in comparison to Philadelphia. With that being said, I believe that the 49ers will be the top dog at 15-2 with their only legitimate loss coming to Philadelphia and their last loss coming at the end of the year. It really just shows that the Niners overall, except for the quarterback position, but that could be Brock Purdy's position to reign for a while. And if it is, then the Niners have the most complete team, in my opinion. I think their defense is doomsday quality. And when it comes to their offense, I mean, they have all the weapons they need. They have McCaffrey. They have Mitchell. They have Debo, Ayuk, Kittle. They have everything they need on offense and defense. If Brock Purdy is the answer to San Francisco, this team could be extremely dangerous and because of all that that's why the Niners have the best record in my opinion for the NFC altogether and that'll do it for today's episode I know there's going to be some disagreement along the way so if you have something to say go into the comment section be respectful of course but yeah that's it for today's episode I hope you guys enjoy and if you do please like comment down below and subscribe our next episode will be our first college football episode as we take a look at the top 25. What I'm doing is I'm making my own separate top 25 from ESPN or NCAA's top 25. And I'm going to be using that ranking throughout the entire year. So I hope you guys are excited for that. Anyways, if you want to go follow me, go follow me on Facebook. Go follow me on X slash Twitter. Go follow me on Instagram and TikTok now that I have TikTok. And of course, if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next one. So have a great day. Take care and goodbye.